My name is Devin Posley. I'm the Print Solutions Specialist at Mamaki, and today I'm using the 3040, the UJF 3042, to show secondary surface printing. I have a few examples here on the top that is going to be showing what application I'm currently running. I'm going to zoom in here. The end product you see is going to be a simple picture, but how it's done is you do your color layer and you finish it with a white overcoat. Because of this, it gives it a backlit approach that allows you to see it. Without that white backing, it looks very translucent, which can be a very cool effect, but typically you get a better print by adding white behind it. One second here. And as that continues to go, I can explain a few of the features of the 3042. You're going to have six ink nozzles here at the top. It's going to give you CMYK, white clear. And a very cool feature of the 3042 Mark IIe is going to allow you to do white and color printing simultaneously, which I'm going to be showing you today. Currently, I am doing my automatic media detection. If you open this here, there's a red light that comes through. And I put my finger there, you can see it a little bit. And once it detects the media, then you're off to erases. All right. Go. Give that a few moments to get started here. And this is a very simple application. Through Restlet, we have a feature called Specialty Plates. And what it does is, looking at any material or any color in the file, it will create a white plate, clear plate, or a primer plate, which allows you to simply create these secondary surface files. And I can open this up so you can get a better look at what it's printing here. If you can notice, you're going to see it start with color and then it's going to be followed up with white, making it look like there's a lead of the color first, but typically it gets about four, maybe five inches a little further before the white will start, and then it continues going through. Special plate gives you three options. You have your whole image, valid pixel, invalid pixel non-background. Virtually what this does is it changes how much white ink is it laying behind your print. Some will give you a full flush white image. Some will only have whether it's ink or text and then some will just cover text. What I'm doing today is going to be a valid pixel non-background which is going to allow for you to see through the translucent material. An example of that would be this here. If you can see where the acrylite is, you can see that there's nothing there. So this is a very cool application that's very popular for us as well. We'll give us a few more moments to finish up there. And I'm currently printing at a six by six speed, which is going to be a production speed typically, but because of the quality, I have no problem with it. It's gonna finish up its last few passes there. There we go. And now that it's finished, I'm going to bring it back into local mode, which is going to bring the bed back out to me. It would help if I remove the sticker. And there's your print. My name is Devin Posley. I'm the Print Solution Specialist at Mamaki, and I'm going to be covering a few of our applications printed with our jig feature. Starting with our kebab. From our kebab feature, how it sets up is once you connect it to the 3042, it lays directly flat into the kebab. And once you media detect, you will start to notice it print and it slowly starts to turn as it's printing. Because of this, it gives you a full 360 degree print and it gives a very cool finish effect. This is going to be one that was just a simple Mamaki logo, but this one here is going to be a 360 print. This was designed through Illustrator, but Rasseling does give you a very simple feature of designing it around a radius so you can get a full masking print without anything overlapping. As you can see here, this is going to be the start of the print, but it's a very seamless transition to where everything looks like one coherent print. This is going to be one of the features that, Rass that Mamaki create. But we do also have jigs that you're able to add yourself. 
Because of these sticks, you're able to print on a lot of various materials, hockey pucks, whistles, fire hydrants, a few things I've done in the last month or so. And I have a few examples here that have come from our jig printing. Now we're not going to have these, but a very cool picture is going to be this container that I recently printed as well. With the jig, it allows for you to conceal the sides, but keep your surface flat so that you have a very even surface, which allows for a consistent print. If your surface isn't even, or if you're having some parts that are higher than others, you have overspray or you can have head crashes. So with our jig printing, it allows us to have a very flat surface and flush surface, which gives you a very crisp and optimal print. And that's going to be inside. There you go.